Mr. Epic is back, and welcome back to the Mr. Epic Show! The real life videos with an educational touch. Well, I mean, it's been a while since I've been here last, and a few things have changed. First of all, I lost my glasses again. Yay! It's like the third time this happened in my series of the Mr. Epic Show. I'm gonna do a whole video about that very soon, don't worry. I'm trying to bring this series out a bit more regularly anyway. But now today, there's something I want to talk about, which, or at least where I live, is pretty relevant at the minute. Today I want to talk about thunderstorms, and why do I want to talk about thunderstorms? Because we are in the middle of summer, and we have a lot of thunderstorms going on. What is the most iconic bit of a thunderstorm for you? Is it a thunder? Is it a lightning flash? Is it a gusting wind? Or is it just the rain which wrenches you to your skin? While you write that down in the comments, let me tell you a few little fun things about thunderstorms in general. Did you know that the lightning itself is actually created with the friction of the water droplets inside of a storm cloud? As they rub together, they create a huge amount of static energy, which has to be released in some way. A common myth is that the lightning bolt from the cloud actually travels down to the earth, but maybe it's also a bit more common knowledge these days that a lightning bolt actually travels from the earth upwards. I'm sure it'd make more sense when it would go down, but I guess that's just how science has figured out how it works. This electric discharge is actually very powerful, and such a lightning bolt can reach an average temperature of around, let's say, just nice and cool 20,000 degrees Celsius, which is about 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit for you Yanks out there. But I'm the guy who actually does things in centigrade and Celsius. So I'm the kind of guy who does things in Celsius because that makes much more sense. Water freezes at zero and boils at 100. Does that make more sense of freezing at 32 and boiling at, I don't know what kind of temperature it boils at in Fahrenheit. Guys, the metric system. Why? That just makes so much more sense than any imperial or American system or whatever else it may come from. Anyhow, such a lightning bolt does get pretty hot. So hot in fact that the air around it expands rapidly due to the extreme heat. The rapid expansion of the air around the lightning bolt creates a kind of a shockwave. And this shockwave is what we hear as thunder. I think it should also be common knowledge that thunder travels slower than lightning because lightning is made of light. And thunder is sound, so that's why light will arrive to the person earlier than the thunder will. Probably pretty hard to hear thunder if you're further than 12 miles, or 20 kilometers, 20 kilometers, or 12 miles. Kilometers are supreme! Kilometers, man! Dude! Metric! Not imperial. I'm sure I can deal with miles better than with ounces, but, you know, metric system for the win! Now I may be complaining about these summer storms we are having at the minute over here in Germany because Jesus Christ, we had one we had one like every two days or last two weeks. But back in 1703, there was a, a big storm. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about like a hurricane storm because that's like a tropical storm. But I'm talking like a normal European kind of storm. It was just known as the Great Storm because it was so great. Anyhow, in 1703, that storm wrecked Havoc in southern England. Back in the day, it managed to kill over 8,000 people, which is obviously probably due to the fact that the infrastructure back then wasn't as good as today. In fact, the infrastructure back then was so bad, or at least so damaged, well, I mean, it seems bad if it managed to get destroyed so badly. That storm was powerful enough to destroy ships which were moored in harbour, like blow them out of the water, literally blow them out of the water. 400 windmills were destroyed. I mean, if you want to harness the wind, you have to consider that wind maybe a bit faster than you should want it to be. So yeah, being a windmill in the storm is not a nice face. And in the and in the industrial London back in the day, over 2,000 chimneys were destroyed. I mean, 
Just imagine you're walking down the street, so yay! Happy day in London, and then BOOM! You get slammed by a chimney. That is not something I'd like to do. That's why people, when there's a big storm going on in your area, stay indoors. Or if you have a shelter, use a shelter. Otherwise you'll end like this little poor guy. Yeah. Poor guy. How do you know if you're actually in a storm or in just a slight gust of wind? Well, the official rating of a storm is when the storm picks up wind speed over 55 miles per hour. I'll just use miles per hour in this case, okay? I know metric system is awesome, but I can actually use miles per hour as well because I'm English and I live in Germany, so I learned both, more or less. So yeah, don't judge me. But metric system is still superior. Okay? Am I teaching you more about the metric system or am I teaching you about thunderstorms now? I have no clue. Anyhow, yeah. A storm is officially rated a storm when the winds exceed 56 miles per hour, which is a 10 on the Beaufort scale. And if it gets over 73 miles per hour, congratulations, you are in a hurricane. Yay, tropical storms are the best kind of storms after all. Yeah, thank God we don't have hurricanes over here in Europe. If you're in a hurricane or, or typhoon area, might as well write in the comments if you ever had any good experience. Well, can't have good experiences, but if you had experiences in, the, in those kind of situations. And what is the best to do if you're in your area, if you've got a typhoon or a hurricane coming your way? Storm clouds are normally pretty high clouds, able to reach up the height of 10 kilometers in the sky. And if you go up 10 kilometers in the sky, it gets pretty cold pretty quickly. Now in 1974, there was an incident in Arkansas, America, where people were killed by frozen ducks that fell out of the sky after being caught by a storm. That would be a much better movie than the Sharknado series. <laughs> You'd like make a Ducknado, Frozen Ducknado. That would be like Frozen Duck Tempest. <laughs> the day after the Frozen Duck. That would be an awesome movie, honestly. If any anyone takes that idea, you can credit me and, and I can do the theme tune for the movie as well. That would be a great movie. Now, this is a very shocking fact, quite literally. If you're in a very, very severe thunderstorm, you might be lucky enough to be actually witness over 6,000 lightning bolts per minute if the storm is severe, high, and pretty badass. That obviously increases your chances of being hit by lightning, which are relatively low. Like, very relatively low. It's much easier to get in a car crash than anything else, really, that can kill you, so... Don't drink and drive. Yeah, although there are up to 5 to 10 deaths in Australia alone due to lightning strikes every year, it's not surprising if you consider that the current in a lightning bolt can be up to 30,000 amps. In comparison, that's like the same energy of 30,000 microwaves. So yeah, pretty fried if you get hit by that. So everybody, that was my short video about thunderstorms. And this is my first video using a green screen, by the way, if you haven't noticed. This is footage I took myself. As I said, we had like so many thunderstorms like that lately. And I just thought I'd get some nice footage in the background. So you don't have to be bored with me, my rambling on of a blue background. But yeah, guys, put your experiences in the comments. I really, I'd really love to read them all. If you're up for more shocking videos like this, you might as well subscribe, as I said in the intro as well. But I mean, come on, guys. Mr. Epic Show is back, and I'm trying to make it come to, I'm trying to make it stay as well. But I can only do that with your input and your, your moral support. So guys, if you want to see more like this, just let me know. Show the channel some love, and stay epic. Because in the next video, I will see ya! Okay, more effective end cards, more effective end cards. Check out the stuff, check out the stuff to stay epic, everybody. Go on, do it, do it, do it, do it. Have you done it yet? Good, thank you.